May 14th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Samuel chapters 8 through 10 of the Old Testament. Later David defeated the Philistines and subdued them. David took Methig Amma from the Philistines. He defeated the Moabites. He made them lie on the ground and then used a rope to measure them off. He put two-thirds of them to death and spared the other third. The Moabites became David's subjects and brought tribute. David defeated King Hadad-Ezer, son of Rehob of Zobah, when he came to reestablish his authority over the Euphrates River. David seized from him 1,700 charioteers and 20,000 infantrymen. David cut the hamstrings of all but a hundred of the chariot horses. The Armenians of Damascus came to help King Hadad-Ezer of Zobah, but David killed 22,000 of the Armenians. David placed garrisons in the territory of the Armenians of Damascus. The Armenians became David's subjects and brought tribute. The Lord protected David whenever he campaigned. David took the golden shields that belonged to hadad servants and brought them to Jerusalem. From Teba and Beerothai, hadad cities, King David took a great deal of bronze. When King Toy of Hamath heard that David had defeated the entire army of hadad he sent his son Joram to King David to extend his best wishes and to pronounce a blessing on him for his victory over hadad for Toy had been at war with hadad He brought with him various items made of silver, gold, and bronze. King David dedicated these things to the Lord, along with the dedicated silver and gold that he had taken from all the nations that he had subdued, including Aram, Moab, the Ammonites, the Philistines, and Amalek. This also included some of the plunder taken from King hadad son of Rehob of Zobah. David became famous when he returned from defeating the Armenians in the Valley of Salt. He defeated 18,000 in all. He placed garrisons throughout Edom, and all the Edomites became David's subjects. The Lord protected David whenever he campaigned. David reigned over all Israel. He guaranteed justice for all his people. Joab, son of Zeruiah, was general in command of the army. Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilud, was secretary. Zadok, son of Ahitub, and Ahimelech, son of Abiathar, were priests. Saraiah was scribe. Benaiah, son of Jehoda, supervised the Karathites and Pelathites, and David's sons were priests. Then David asked, Is anyone still left from the family of Saul, so that I may extend kindness to him for the sake of Jonathan? Now there was a servant from Saul's house named Ziba, so he was summoned to David. The king asked him, Are you Ziba? He replied, At your service. The king asked, Is there not someone left from Saul's family that I may extend God's kindness to him? Ziba said to the king, One of Jonathan's sons is left. Both of his feet are crippled. The king asked him, Where is he? Ziba told the king, He is at the house of Maker son of Amiel, in Lodibar. So King David had him brought from the house of Maker, son of Amiel, in Lodibar. When Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed low with his face toward the ground. David said, Mephibosheth? He replied, Yes, at your service. David said to him, Don't be afraid, because I will certainly extend kindness to you for the sake of Jonathan, your father. You will be a regular guest at my table. Then Mephibosheth bowed and said, Of what importance am I, your servant, that you show regard for a dead dog like me? Then the king summoned Ziba, Saul's attendant, and said to him, Everything that belonged to Saul and to his entire house I hereby give to your master's grandson. You will cultivate the land for him, you and your sons and your servants. You will bring its produce, and it will be food for your master's grandson to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's grandson, will be a regular guest at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Ziba said to the king, Your servant will do everything that my lord the king has instructed his servant to do. 
So Mephibosheth was a regular guest at David's table, just as though he were one of the king's sons. Now Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. All the members of Ziba's household were Mephibosheth's servants. Mephibosheth was living in Jerusalem, for he was a regular guest at the king's table. But both his feet were crippled. Later the king of the Ammonites died, and his son Hanan succeeded him. David said, I will express my loyalty to Hanan, son of Nahash, just as his father was loyal to me. So David sent his servants with a message expressing sympathy over his father's death. When David's servants entered the land of the Ammonites, the Ammonite officials said to the Lord, Hanan, do you really think David is trying to honor your father by sending these messengers to express his sympathy? No, David has sent his servants to you to get information about the city and spy on it so that they can overthrow it. So Hanan seized David's servants and shaved off half of each one's beard. He cut the lower part of their robes off so that their buttocks were exposed and then sent them away. Messengers told David what had happened, so he summoned them, for the men were thoroughly humiliated. The king said, Stay in Jericho until your beards have grown again, then you may come back. When the Ammonites realized that David was disgusted with them, they sent and hired 20,000 foot soldiers from Aram Beth Rehob and Aram Zobah, in addition to 1,000 men from the king of Maacha and 12,000 men from Ishtab. When David heard the news, he sent Joab and the entire army to meet them. The Ammonites marched out and were deployed for battle at the entrance of the city gate. While the men from Aram Zobah, Rehob, and Ishtob, and Maacah were by themselves in the field. When Joab saw that the battle would be fought on two fronts, he chose some of Israel's best men and deployed them against the Armenians. He put his brother Abishai in charge of the rest of the army, and they were deployed against the Ammonites. Joab said, If the Armenians start to overpower me, you come to my rescue. If the Ammonites start to overpower you, I will come to your rescue. Be strong, let's fight bravely for the sake of our people and the cities of our God. The Lord will do what he decides is best. So Joab and his men marched out to do battle with the Armenians, and they fled before him. When the Ammonites saw the Armenians flee, they fled before his brother Abishai and went into the city. Joab withdrew from fighting the Ammonites and returned to Jerusalem. When the Armenians realized that they had been defeated by Israel, they consolidated their forces. Then Hadad Ezer sent for Arameans from beyond the Euphrates River, and they came to Helam. Shobak, the general in command of Hadad Ezer's army, led them. When David was informed, he gathered all Israel, crossed the Jordan River, and came to Helam. The Arameans deployed their forces against David and fought with him. The Arameans fled before Israel. David killed 700 Aramean charioteers and 40,000 foot soldiers. He also struck down Shobak, the general in command of the army, who died there. When all the kings who were subject to Hadadezer saw they were defeated by Israel, they made peace with Israel and became subjects of Israel. The Arameans were no longer willing to help the Ammonites. God, today I pray for, I pray for everyone who is listening to this video right now. I know all of them are going up against great big huge battles and they're probably like Joab, like stuck in the middle and they've got people coming from the front and the back. And I know that, I know that place, God, where it's not only the front and the back, but the top and the bottom and the sides, and we just become overwhelmed. God, I pray today for people who are dealing with situations like that, that they, like David, will just reach out to you and allow your power and your strength to take over in their lives. That they will turn to you and just ask for breath, to just breathe in the situation, that you will show them the steps they need to take and the path that is yours. That all these other voices, they won't even hear. 
They will only hear yours, just like David did. God, my heart breaks for people who are overwhelmed today. Allow your power, your might, your sovereignty to just flow into their life. And bring them peace. The kind of peace that only can come from you, God. I always get people saying, gosh, if you're a Christian, then why isn't your life smooth? <laughs> There's no place in the Bible where it promised to be that if we become Christians. In fact, it says quite the opposite, but it does promise an incredible peace in our lives. And that is what I hold on to dearly day in and day out, no matter what it is I'm going through. Lord God, we just so trust you. We give up control of everything to you and just trust you that you will take over just like you did the armies of David, overpowering anyone and everything that isn't of your will. We thank you. We thank you for that strength, that control, that might. We thank you for loving us enough to employ all those things for us today and all days in our lives as we glorify you. In your son's name I pray, amen.